Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to the celebration wherein we are going to witness the Pentecostal event. Today, 72 candidates of our parish will be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of confirmation. The reception of the sacrament of confirmation is necessary for the completion of baptismal grace. By confirmation, those who are anointed share more completely in the mission of Jesus Christ and the fullness of the Holy Spirit with which they are filled so that their lives may give off the aroma of Christ. Now, the altar servers, priests, and bishop will enter the church in solemn procession. We all stand and welcome them as we join the entrance hymn.
this parish who desire to receive from you the sacrament of confirmation are happy that you have accepted our invitation to come and confirm us. We want to assure you that we have tried our best to prepare ourselves for this day. In addition to our regular catechism classes, retreat, and different input sessions, we, along with our parents, have made a good confession and are now ready to be anointed for Christ. Today, in the presence of this community, we promise you to be true to our commitment as soldiers of Christ and to remain faithful to the Mother Church as we are filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Please bless us and pray for us as you offer this Holy Eucharist. I am so delighted to welcome our beloved bishop amidst us to seal and anoint our children who have been preparing for the last two years to receive this great sacrament. Dear Bishop, we are really privileged to have you amidst us on behalf of all the priests and parishioners of Holy Spirit Catholic Church, we welcome you amidst us to administer this beautiful sacrament for our children. Dear brothers and sisters, let's put our hands together and welcome our beloved Bishop. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, dear candidates for the sacrament of confirmation, the joy is also on my side to celebrate today amidst the Lenten season a local Pentecost, and this in the parish dedicated to the Holy Spirit. Let us now prepare ourselves for the mysteries of our faith in the Holy Eucharist and for the sacrament of confirmation. First of all, acknowledging that we are sinners and humbly ask the Lord to purify our hearts. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mira Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. May the Paraclete who proceeds from you, we pray, O Lord, enlighten our minds and lead us into all truth, just as your Son has promised, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. A shoot springs from the stock of Jesse, a sky and thrust from his roots. On him the Spirit of the Lord rests, a spirit of wisdom and insight, a spirit of counsel and power, a spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is his breath. He does not judge by appearances. He gives no verdict on hearsay, but judges the wretched with integrity, and with equity gives a verdict for the poor of the land. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. If you are guided by the Spirit, you will be in no danger of yielding to self-indulgence. Since self-indulgence is the opposite of the Spirit, the Spirit is totally against such a thing. And it is precisely because the two are so opposed that you do not always carry out your good intentions. What the Spirit brings is very different. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You cannot belong to Christ, Jesus, unless you crucify all self-indulgent passions and desires. Since the Spirit is our life, let us be directed by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. The spirit of truth will be my witness, and you too will be witnesses, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. <coughs> Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. He then rolled up the scroll gave it back to the assistant and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. And he won the approval of all, and they were, all, they were astonished by the gracious words that came from his lips.
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. <laughs> The Rite of Confirmation Our parish priest, Father George, will now present the candidates for confirmation to the bishop. All candidates who are to be confirmed kindly stand. Your Lordship, we have the candidates of this parish who desire to receive from you the sacrament of confirmation are happy. And the parish community of the Holy Spirit Church wishes to present to you its young men and women and adult candidates who have been prepared and are ready to receive the fullness of Christian initiation in the sacrament of confirmation. Each candidate has been well instructed and is accompanied by a sponsor. It is my privilege to present them to you at this time. I invite you to invoke on them the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, dear candidates for the sacrament of confirmation, may the Lord give you peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The day before yesterday when I landed in Muscat at the immigration, the first question was, are you vaccinated? And which kind of vaccination did you get? Otherwise, I couldn't have entered the country because they wanted to be sure that I was not contaminated by the virus, that I had got already a certain immunity. Not what we are doing today is somehow related to that because the basic vaccination you got in baptism against the evil one, the virus, of the one who since the beginning of humanity is disturbing our life. And for that we need also to get an immunity. And that was given basically in the baptism. Now today, the confirmation, we could call it as a booster. A booster to <coughs> confirm what has been given already in baptism but also to push you for further commitment in your Christian life. Because confirmation is not simply a personal gift for a major spiritual life, that too, but it is predominantly a commitment within the Christian community that you are taking seriously into account what it means to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Men or women, doesn't matter. That we take to heart what we just heard also in the gospel, that the spirit of the Lord has been given to me, to you, with a purpose, not simply to enjoy and to sing Alleluia after Easter again, but to commit as a believer and the belonger to Jesus Christ. And that brings with it uh, an obligation, as we heard, to proclaim the liberty to captives, to give the blind a new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. You are called to take your place within the Christian community now here in Gala, 
later wherever you will live, to bring forward together with your sisters and brothers the gospel of the Lord, the good news, because that is our task. There are so many bad news nowadays, we know it, the news of war, news of uh, sicknesses, news of crimes, and so on. We as Christians should be bearer of good news, and for that you are called. So my dear friends, when I'm in a few moments anointing you with the Holy Chrism, telling you be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, it's not simply an external gesture, there's something happening in you because you will be marked for all eternity as one who belongs to Jesus Christ and who can work also on his behalf and with his power wherever you are. That doesn't mean that you have to do great things because in our Christian life, the most important things are small things which we are doing every day in living the virtues we have heard about in the second letter to the Galatians in our behavior as true Christians. It is always my pleasure when I hear, sometimes from around the world, when I'm meeting people in other continents that they tell me, oh, we have in our parish people who have worked earlier in the Gulf, and they are among the most active members we have. That's the fruit of what we are doing there. When you are not taking leave from your commitment with the confirmation, but living it actively wherever you are. As I said, here in Gala or later, wherever you are going in your professional life or in further career. Never forget that you belong to him who is sending you for an active commitment and doing the Christian duties, not only in the religious regard, uh, going to mass and so on, that is important, very important, but that you transform it into the practice of your life every day in keeping the commandments of our Lord. I wish to express my gratitude to all those who have brought you up to this moment when you are receiving now the special, in a special way the gift of the Holy Spirit, the parents who gave you the life, then the teachers, catechists, the priests working here in the parish, and so many Christians who have given you a good example through their daily life in accompanying you in your prayer. Because all together we are forming one body, even if we are not always fitting very well each one to the other, but as a whole we are formed by the one who is Jesus Christ and who wants us to be one body. And that is possible only because of the Holy Spirit who brings us together and who keeps us together. In a few moments, you will answer me. That's the renewal of your baptismal commitment. Today you will say, I do, with strong voice, but it's not only a question of words here in the church. The question will be the proof and the test in your daily life where you are doing your faith as far as possible. I pray for you that you remain strong in your faith despite all the temptations you may have now and later because Christian life is a challenge and is not always easy because it wouldn't be a Christian life if it were easy. Jesus Christ has showed it himself to us. That you may have the strength to do that with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because, again, you have got the basic vaccination in baptism 
and then the booster today in the confirmation which keeps you alive and gives you the necessary immunity against the powers of the evil and makes you capable to do the good which is coming from God and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Renewal of baptismal promises. The candidates are now asked to renew the baptismal promises. All candidates kindly stand. My dear young friends, candidates for the sacrament of confirmation, I am asking you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Candidates, kindly keep standing. Laying on of hands. The sign of laying on of hands is based on scripture. It was a gesture of the apostles and giving the gift of the Spirit. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these his adopted sons and daughters already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. In a moment of silence, we pray for the candidates to be confirmed. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Candidates, please be seated. The anointing with chrism. Bishop will now anoint each candidate with the chrism oil. Bishop dips his right thumb in the chrism and makes the sign of the cross on the forehead of the one to be confirmed. As he says, the name of the candidate, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The newly confirmed response, Amen. As each candidate comes forward, 
The sponsors also, please come forward and place your right hand on the candidate's shoulder as Bishop anoints him or her.
kindly rise for the prayers of the faithful. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God, the Almighty Father, and be one in mind and in our prayers, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from his Holy Spirit, are one. Our response is, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For all these sons and daughters of God, confirmed by the gift of the Holy Spirit, that they may give witness to Christ and continue his mission to the world by lives built on faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For parents and sponsors of the newly confirmed, who lead them in faith, that they may set an example to encourage them to follow the footsteps of Christ, Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For the Holy Catholic Church, in union with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Paul, all priests and religious, that commissioned by the Holy Spirit, they may strengthen the work of evangelization entrusted to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For peace in Ukraine and Russia, that the Lord of peace and reconciliation may bring this war to a just end and protect all innocent victims and everyone directly involved in military action. Bless the leaders with wisdom, vision, and perseverance needed to build together a world of justice and solidarity, and to break down walls of hostility and division. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For the prosperity of the Sultanate of Oman, <coughs> under the wise leadership of His Majesty, Sultan Haytham bin Tariq, May this country be a place where all live in peace and harmony. May His Majesty, His ministers, and the citizens be blessed abundantly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you sent your Spirit upon the apostles and through them and their successors you give the Spirit to your people. May his work begun at Pentecost continue to grow in the hearts of all who believe. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of his hands for the praise and glory of his name. Accept the oblation of your family, we pray, O Lord, that those who have received the gift of the Holy Spirit may keep safe what they have received and come to eternal rewards through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages and ending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we relay for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Paul our Bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer of our Synod. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit as, we as we gather together, together in your name, with, with you alone, alone to guide us, Make, Make yourself, yourself at home in our hearts. hearts. Teach, Teach us the us way we way must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down to the wrong path. No partiality influence our actions. Let us find in your religion so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father, the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Thanksgiving prayer. All newly confirmed are requested to kneel down. Others, please be seated. Together, let us pray. God, our loving Father, we thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit with whom you have sealed us today. Spirit of God, grant us the gift of wisdom to lighten our minds and to keep our hearts pure the gift of understanding to comprehend the meaning of God's message, which increase our faith, the gift of light judgment to see the best way to follow God's plan and thereby make right decisions, the gift of courage to live the faith in spite of the many challenges and temptations we might face the gift of knowledge to recognize the mysteries of faith so that we may know you and love you more. The gift of reverence to always desire to worship and serve you. The gift of the fear of the Lord to avoid in the least of sin in order not to displease God, our loving and caring Father. We thank you for our Bishop Paul, who sealed us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for our parish priest and all the priests who directed us spiritually. Thank you for all our teachers who have guided us and taught us your faith. And right now, at the beginning of our Catechism classes, until today, thank you for our parents and sponsors who are the first teachers of our faith life. Now it's our turn to offer our hands and feet to work in your vineyard. Accept our offerings and grant us the grace and strength to fulfill your will in our day-to-day -day lives. We make this prayer in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Word of thanks by parish priest. Dear Bishop Paul, and my dear brother priests, and dear children who are confirmed today with the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit, dear parents, catechists, 
and dear brothers and sisters, there is a saying, God has two dwellings, one in heaven and the other in a thankful heart. A thank you is the best prayer that anyone could say. First of all, I thank the Almighty Father for all his graciousness for bringing us together here and being with us since we started preparing for this ceremony. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing our children with gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. Dear Bishop Paul, thank you for being with us today and celebrating this Holy Eucharist. Thank you for anointing our children with the gifts of the Holy Spirit and making them strong soldiers of Christ. Thank you, Bishop. I must offer a special word of thanks to my brother priests, Sebastian, Catalino, Philip, and Kosaya, for spending quality time with our children and praying for them. My dear children, I take this opportunity to congratulate you. Now you have become powerful soldiers of Christ, and always you remember that you belong to Christ. So always walk with Christ and be guided by the Holy Spirit. I'm sure that this is a very special occasion in your life. I thank Almighty God for each one of you because you are a gift to this parish, to your families, and to the entire world. Words alone cannot express my gratitude to our catechists for their cooperation, support, collaboration, and understanding. I'm proud to say that our catechism faculty work as a team with a family spirit. A big thanks to our catechism ministry and their coordinators. Special note of thanks to the confirmation class teachers who prepared our children for this beautiful sacrament. I also extend my special thanks to the sponsors. No one can know how many hours of work it takes to prepare and bring about an event like this. And I especially want to thank the sociocultural and liturgy team for making the day so beautiful. You have truly given glory to God through your efforts and your love for the church. A special thanks to our choir and through their melodious singing raised our hearts to God. In a special way, I thank Altar Service Ministry and their coordinators, Ministry of Lectors and their coordinator, Eucharistic Ministry and their coordinator, Usher's Ministry and their coordinator, I thank you and assure you of my love and prayers. I extend my sincere gratitude to all parents who have guided these wonderful children in true wisdom and knowledge in the fear of God. You are the first and best teachers of faith in their lives. Protect them from all evil and pray for them always. A special thanks to our parish staff, Frankie, Praveen, Jacob, and Biju. I extend my sincere gratitude to all my parishioners for your support, prayers, collaboration, and encouragement. By chance, anyone to whom I owe my gratitude has been not mentioned, I say a big thank you. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together and thank the Lord and each other.
The Lord be with you. And your spirit. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples bless you and lead you blameless and gather us one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Congratulations, dear newly confirmed.